Hello everyone, this is Daiki and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about books that I read to survive in 2020 coming up. 2020 has been a rough year I suppose for you too and uh, I want to digest what I did for 2020 and for books that I read to encounter each problems that I faced in 2020. On January I participated in an animal rights movement in Tokyo March for Animals. Usually what I do in front of many more people is I get nervous. So nervous that I don't want to go out. And uh, it was my first time going to an animal rights movement in Tokyo, which is far from my home. In order to cope with that anxiety that I had, I learned what's called an ACT ACT, which is a short abbreviation form for acceptance and commitment therapy. And the book I read was Happiness Trap. Although I read the Japanese version, this book teaches you that if the negative thoughts come in, in your head or if self-critics are happening inside your mind, you just let those thoughts be as they are. What most of the people, including myself in the past, is usually to try to combat those feelings by drinking, excessive drinking, spending a lot of money on something and later on regret it. And this is not a great stress relieving way. It is proven that the more you try to suppress the negative feeling, the more it will fight back. So imagine you're playing chess. If there's a negative turn from your negative opponent, you would usually put a positive pawn, but it's going to be endless. Negative feeling, positive feeling, negative feeling, positive feeling, just goes on like that forever. So what you want to do is just accept that negative feeling until it disappears because negative feelings do disappear in order to learn more about acceptance coming therapy i included the book in the description below so you can check that out this changed my life dramatically i could do so many things that i would never ever thought i could do on february i went to hokkaido with my friend just like the vlog i did it was pretty fun so i didn't have a problem with that on march i actually had a vegan hangout in osaka which was really near my house and as always, I always had a social anxiety. So meditation and act helps me a lot cope with this anxiety so I could disclose myself and talk to those vegan friends. And one of them is very close to me now. So February and March, they were pretty good. On end of March, I graduated my university and on April, I had a full-time job at a kindergarten which uses English so I got a job there thanks to those books that I described act and meditation which is a daily habit of mine it wasn't it wasn't that stressful at first I could just deal with this new environment that I had that I was in not being too stressed out and so I kept working every day and since the kindergarten was far from my house in May I moved to a house you might notice that my background has changed because I live alone now in Kobe and th this is where I live now so the days went by and in June a friend back in high school he was my best friend he came to my house from Osaka and um, I treated with some vegan dinner provided with place to sleep over which I don't usually do but when he got drunk with a beer he became an anti-vegan lions eat zebras why are you not accusing them you shouldn't take back scenes if you're vegan you shouldn't take medicines look at those tribes that must rely on animals what do they gotta do since I didn't have knowledge on how to talk over those pricks all I could say was like lions are not smart enough to be in court you know those shallow arguments that I could make and he just kept going on with the criticizing my belief and insulting animals at first I was so sad because he was my best friend in high school so I, I read a book wherever you go there you are by John Kabat-Zinn and uh, there's a section loving kindness meditation which is to forgive an opponent that you love basically love is something that you call to be you nurture it not just something that you make so in order to make a love for yourself first because unless you love yourself there's no way that you can love other people it's like if you're starving but you're trying to be overly altruistic give everyone else food you die which is exactly like that unless you are not full or satisfied moderately you won't be able to help anyone it's basically the same thing so after he left i read a book that's right keep going to forgive his imperfection everyone makes a mistake you can say shit things about even to your best friend and uh, i understand now now i can forgive himself and also the recent book that i read was self-compassion i'll Link down in the description below too. This book changed my life, which I'm gonna talk about later because that's the recent book that I read. So at that time, that's what I read and um, kind of helped me cope with the stress. But sometimes I bring up this anger towards him. I wasn't like I was mad at him for criticizing me after everything that I'd done, like preparing dinner and providing him with a place to stay and sleep over. It was more like I felt the animals were insulted 
not me. And I was really sad to find out that he was okay to exploit animals. But sometimes I just recall that memory, unfortunately. But now I have forgiven him. I even thought of blocking him on social media, but I, I didn't thanks to the book. Okay, so I kept working until end of July. I couldn't take the job anymore. The, my job manager was calling me that I was a burden to my colleagues. I had two partners working as teachers. So we, including myself, we were three teachers and we were taking care of two-year-old kids. And the um, manager told me that I was not meeting with a requirement. I never had an experience, so I was trying to study and um, try to communicate with kids as kindly as possible. But somehow the partners were not happy with my attitudes and managers would politely suggested that I would just move to a different school which I rejected because the reason why I moved to Kobe was that workplace was pretty close so I was like mm, if they say like something like that then I guess I would just find another job that's what I did I get a job at a call center but it wasn't working out either I lasted about two months from um, August to end of September it wasn't that long either and call center was horrible it was noisy it was all those digits and uh, high frequencies customers are not really nice I had to be really flexible to different needs that they wanted. This is what I feel. This is when I figured out that I had an Asperger syndrome. I never told you about this one, but I had a diagnosis on September. I will never forget 24th of September. I was on a spectrum when I was in middle school. I was diagnosed, but I was never officially autistic. But now I am officially have Asperger syndrome and also a little bit of ADHD. So I got a diagnosed with those um, symptoms, those spectrums, my doctor suggested that I was not fit for the call center job, so I quit. And after that, I had a really bad mental breakdown. I was so nervous about my financial remainings because I didn't earn that much back in nursery school, kindergarten, nor at a call center. So along with these incidents, I had a business on an e-commerce store, fairlyspecies.com. I sell vegan apparels there to like a side hustle. So I started the company. It, it was in June actually, but in September, that's where I could finally launch my store. I did my product, getting ready for people to view the website, which was new. In October, I restarted YouTube. I felt like I wanted to talk about animal rights issues because the more I hang out with vegan people, the more I felt like I, I had to spread the message, awareness for the animals and help people turn into vegan. That was my motives of restarting YouTube. And in, in the future video, I also want to talk about the similarities that autism and the veganism share. I'm thinking of turning my channel into veganism slash autism kind of channel because I want to share my experience and uh, I think people out there with autism deserve some information, some understanding. So I think that's equally important to spread awareness for the animals and those with um, challenged conditions. And in November, I did a vlog at Nagoya and participated in the animal rights movement. I met a lot of people there and some gained some uh, subscribers on my channel because I introduced my channel, which was really pleasant. And uh, I could go to Nagoya Castle, which was cool too. So this is pretty much in 2020. In December, I went to Himeji Castle, which I didn't do a vlog, but I could. We were dressed as some costumes and casually join pamphlets to everyone. That's what I did, but I didn't film the vlog because it was too casual. But I guess that was my year. And uh, the one I mentioned about my best friend betraying me, you know, just kidding. I, I forgive him now. But um, s sometimes, even, you know, after two months or something, I would still bring up some phrases that he said. Plants have lives too. Are you differentiating plants eaten by livestock or eaten by vegans? Are you discriminating those plants from something like n nonsense? And uh, I was so mad at that him sometimes, even he, after he left. But I met this book, Self-Compassion, changed my life. This is the book of the year, in my opinion. This changed how I perceive myself and how I perceive people. So I had a really low self-esteem. Everything I did was not enough for me. So I kept criticizing myself. You're so ugly, you're so stupid, you're so, you sound so stupid. You can't even do things right. But hurting myself was not working out for me. It wasn't getting me anywhere that's ideal for me. So I kept looking for some way to accept myself. So this is how I met self-compassion. Surprisingly, happily, that book contained how to forgive other people, how to be compassionate towards other people. So I learned it from the book and now I'm compassionate for everyone, even for non-vegans or even for my ex-best friend that I hated and 
kept criticizing me for being vegan. So this is a great book. This is something that you need. If you if you have this self-compassion book, it's gonna change your life. It's gonna save you from those self-criticizing, ugly, lonely hell hole that you might be in. So those are books that I read and they changed my life. I read so many books this year too, but I wanted to just share the best three that I read in my entire life ever. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Until next time.